So, it looks as if already, and we're still in the beta here right now, Visceral have implemented some changes to weapons and gadgets for Battlefield Hardline. Now, it's great that the developers have managed to get a patch working for this game in time for the beta, because don't forget it's due to end today. Monday was the extended day for the beta and they're releasing a patch on this day. So a lot of people, I gather, aren't going to have a huge amount of time to play this. And unfortunately, the patch only comes for PC as well. There wasn't enough time to compile a patch list for the consoles and submit one to Sony and Microsoft because we know how long it takes to patch on those platforms. All of the feedback that has come from the beta over the last week has gone into these changes. So whether it be a weapon change, whether it be a gadget change or anything like that, the feedback itself has come from the beta. This is not somebody just sitting in an office deciding what they want to do. All of the feedback that we've been giving over the last week has gone into this patch. So I guess it's time to have a look at some of the things that they've changed. First of all, the 870p Magnum, which is the pump action shotgun, has had its effective range reduced. Now, a lot of people will probably start celebrating when I say that, because we know how powerful the shotguns have been in Battlefield Hardline. There were many occasions where the guy is at medium and long range away from me, and he hits me with one shot and drops me to the floor. It's quite annoying, but it's always difficult to balance shotguns in a first-person shooter. It's good to see they've made that change, though. The M16 and the M416 have had their damage lowered and their recoil increased. Now, there's no specifics, but I can take a guess that the horizontal recoil here is probably what has been increased. If you played with the M16 or the M416 over the last week, you'll know just how accurate they are at range because they have, well, virtually no side-to-side -side recoil. And also, they did a lot higher damage than what they did in Battlefield 4. So for the M416 and the M16, at pretty much any range, you could drop somebody with four shots, which was just ridiculous. So it's good to see that those have at least taken a nerf in some form. The RO933, or the M4 Carbine, has had its recoil reduced, but it's also had its damage reduced as well. This is the starter weapon for the Operator class, and a lot of people complain that it did just kick around far too much. I didn't find it to be a huge problem. I do know that the recoil in Hardline is on the higher side anyway, unless it's the M16, but there we go. So I wasn't too bothered by this, but the fact that they are reducing it, I guess makes sense because it is the starter weapon. You don't want to make it too difficult for somebody to use the first weapon available in the game. The Uzi, available to the Mechanic class, has had its hipfire accuracy increased, and the P90 has had its spread increased as well. Now, I'm going to concentrate on the P90 here. That thing is like a freaking laser beam. If you stick a laser sight on it, you didn't even have to aim. It was that good. Now, I like the fact that there are some weapons in this game that you don't need to aim down the sight for, but I don't want it so that it's so easy to do that that you can just wreck anybody at any range. The P90 didn't do the greatest damage, but pretty much whatever range you were shooting at, you were always getting hit markers. So it's nice to see the spread's been increased, makes it a little bit more difficult to hit people at long range. The M45 and the G36C have both been swapped over to the COP faction, and the UMP and the M416 have moved over to the criminal faction. This is a change that I didn't really expect to happen, but having looked at why they've done it, because obviously most of the big weapons that are available for the Operator class were kind of available for the cops, it's good to see the M416 moving over to the criminal side. I really like the G36 as well, but I don't really see how it made much sense being on the criminal side. So maybe this is a good change, maybe it's a bad change. I don't know how much of a gameplay aspect change it's going to have, but I guess we'll see in the future. Here we go, the big one. They've reduced the effective range of the 338 Magnum rounds for the bolt action snipers. Now this is a really good change. There's nothing mentioned about a damage change for the Magnum round, but it does indeed say that they're going to be reducing the effective range, which basically means the drop-off is going to be a little bit shorter than it was before. For those of you that unlocked the Magnum round, you'll know how much damage it did to vehicles anyway. It's nice to say they've dropped the damage a little bit so that Vehicles that are really far away, 
no longer really have to worry about the Magnum round so much. If they do get hit by one, they will still take damage, but not so drastically as they did before. You could take out a helicopter in three shots with that thing at pretty much any range. Nice to see that they've decreased that a little bit. They've also fixed a bug with the Magnum rounds where the recoil was causing people to lose kills. And that basically means that the gun would kick up so far that even though you were aiming at somebody, the bullet wouldn't go where you were aiming when you hit the fire button, and it would go where you were aiming once the recoil had started to happen. So you were losing kills because the recoil was, was just so massive. That's kind of a trade-off of the Magnum rounds. You do get that massive recoil after each shot, which makes it difficult to fire loads of bullets in succession. But it's, it is good that they fixed that bug, which means if you're aiming for a headshot and you get one, well, then you deserved it because your bullets are going where they're supposed to be going. They've also reduced the SPAS 12's damage overall, which is another good change because, as I said already, shotguns are ridiculously powerful in this game. So the fact that that's had a bit of a nerf is always a good thing. And finally, they've reduced the 9mm damage and they've reduced the 5.56x45mm damage for assault rifles and SMGs. So weapons like the AWM... Or, or is it the AKM? No, the AKM Assault Rifle, which is basically the AK-47, won't do as much damage anymore. So it will maybe take a shot two or more to get a kill on somebody. A couple of gadget tweaks to finish off this video. They're reducing the cooldown time of the med packs and the ammo packs, which means that the cooldown is where you drop one, and then there's a period of time where you cannot drop another one. A lot of people complain that it was too long and they couldn't drop another med pack quick enough when they needed to. I know they massively increased it from Battlefield 4, which I think is kind of a good thing. They're not just spamming med packs all over the place, but it was very, very long. And sometimes you're in a situation where you think you might need one, and you couldn't drop one, even though 30 seconds before you dropped one. It just didn't make a huge amount of sense. And finally, they've increased the resupply time of the breaching charges. Now, this plays a massive role in hot wire, or at least when you're playing in a vehicle, because all people were doing was sticking C4 on the ground, blowing up the cars, getting loads of points for killing one of the objective cars in hot wire, go and stand next to an ammo pack again and instantly refill that C4. So it's nice to see they've made a bit of a change there. Take it on some player feedback because that was one of my main gripes about Hotwire at the moment. There was just so much spam of the breaching charges. People got kind of wise towards the end of the week. People started to use it quite a lot. It's good to see they've made that change. And there you have it. Those are your changes for the last day of the Battlefield Hardline beta. I can't be confident if these changes are going to move forward to the final release, but the fact they've been made on feedback from the beta suggests that, well, that's what a beta's for. We were there to give feedback to make changes, so I see no reason why this won't be in the final game. But anyway, thank you very much for watching today. If you could leave me a rating and a comment, that'd be greatly appreciated. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.